such, such a joy for Dares at Now to be here. Um, actually, we were uh, Stephen's youth pastor. Um, I know it's hard to believe that when you see how young I look. Um, we were 13 when we started as youth pastors. So. But God is grand, and it was a great service, first service. I love the energy in the house and the spirit of the Lord that's here. Uh, you know, sometimes in life you think things happen and they happen by accident, and, and certainly sometimes things do, but things don't happen by accident for those who are born again, who walk with God. Our lives, God directs things for us. The steps of the righteous are ordered, the scripture says. That means even though you might be in a season that is difficult for you right now, just keep moving, don't quit, don't give up, don't roll over, don't stop. God is faithful. Um, what we have to understand about God is you read his word and, and he'll declare something over your life and it, you think it's a promise, but it's not a promise. God doesn't make promises. He makes oaths. When he says something, it's established. He doesn't live in time. He doesn't get new information. There's no information coming to God that's new to him. He doesn't say, what? Are you, are you kidding me? What happened? He doesn't do that. We do that. He already knows. It's already set. It's already established. He is a living God. And so you, some things we're breathing our way into. Just a matter of time. Because God is working it. So when you get connected to him and you walk with him, it's not new. He's, he's been wooing you and drawing you. If you have people that are, that are not born again, that is in your sphere of influence, in your world, you ought, to, you ought to draw them in. You ought to put some demands upon them in the spiritual realm that God would save them and set them free and redeem their life. And I need my cousin saved. And, I'm, my, and this guy I'm working for, God, is heathen. But man, I, Father, in the name of Jesus, you brought me in this company. Come on. Come on. You have an, you have an ATM card? Everybody has have an ATM card, say amen. So you put your ATM card in the bank, and the first thing the bank says to you is, what's the code? Give me a passcode. I got to make sure this is really you. So give me a passcode. And so you put in whatever your code is. In the spiritual realm, the passcode is always the same. It's Jesus. Jesus is our passcode. In the name of Jesus. He opens the doors that no one can open. Jesus. How do I get healed from this? Jesus. How does this door open? Jesus. How do I get this promotion? Jesus. How do I get healed from this disease? Jesus. Come on. How do I get married? Jesus. How do I make a way when there's no way? Jesus. Jesus, man. Come on. You got to walk. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. How do I get these people into the kingdom? Jesus. So you pop in the code. It's Jesus. And then the next question is, well, what can I do for you? How can I help you? And then you can't answer the machine, whatever you want to do. Are you, are you kidding me? No, I'll ask you again, hey, can I, what can I do to help you? What, what do you need? You want to withdraw? You want to deposit? You know, whatever you want to do. It'll kick, the, kick it back out, and you'll start the process again. And after a number of times, it'll hold that card and says, you're not really the real person. Sometimes as believers, we walk in that kind of relationship with God. But you get born again, and the Spirit of God is in you. And you're just asking God, and God's kind of lifting you someplace, and you're saying to the Lord, whatever you want to do. You got to find that place in the Lord that you have for me. And watch what God does. God can do anything at any time for anybody. I live by that. There's no one like him. He's king of kings and, and lord of lords. And it's not by accident that you're here. It's by his design. And you got to make some demands in a good way. I remember when I was uh, growing up, I've always walked with God. My dad died before I was born, so I just walked with God. There was nobody, nobody else for me. I grew up in South Central L.A., and I... And later on in life, uh, uh, I was seventh, eighth grade. I was walking to school, and I asked the Lord, who would ever marry a, 
Who would ever marry me? Who would ever marry me? You ever ask that question? Sometimes you're just thinking, man, how can this work out? God, show me what's going on. And I, I really was just kind of a thought as I was walking uh, to school. And, and he had, gave me a vision. And in the vision, it was uh, as I can clearly see people here, I saw this woman. And uh, she was beautiful, about 19. She was fine. I was like, go ahead, God. <laughs> so, but you don't get married in the eighth grade. You just still go to school. So I went to school and fast forward. Now I'm playing pro football now and had some friends that came up to watch one of the games. And, and they had uh, brought Derizette my, uh, to the game. And, and so I I'd, I'd, I'd talked to them and and she came, and she was in the Miss uh, California pageant. She was Miss South Los Angeles. And, and so we started dating and, you know, working out and talking. And, and she said, let me just tell you something. Before we get serious, you know, I had ovarian cancer when I was 19 years old. And the ovarian cancer was so aggressive that I only had a 30% a, a chance of survival. But God smiled on me. And. They took one of my ovaries. I have one left. I asked them to leave one, but this is so damaged. They're telling me I'll never be able to have children. And so I said to her, girl, I saw you in the seventh grade. <laughs> walking down Main Street, crossing from Taco Tio. <laughs> so I just put my hands on her, and I said, in the name of Jesus, be fruitful and multiply. You know, that's a promise that comes from God. Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. And then when he releases a blessing on us, he says, be fruitful. Come on, multiply. You know the rest of it? Replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. You ought to be living in that. It's not like a slogan. It's God's way. It's not a cool thing where you post. It's his way. So I said to her, you're going you're to be fruitful and we're going to multiply. So we went on and got married, and we have a girl named Danielle and a boy named Joshua and a boy named Joseph and a boy named Judah and a boy named Jeremiah. So I just say, slow your roll, girl, hey. Derizette is here. Stan, would you, Derizette? He is the great God, and he makes a way when there's no way. You know why? Because Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The word way there is translated, it's the highway. It's the way from one place to another. Jesus can take you wherever you want to go. Whatever you need to do, God can do that for you. He's with you. And you may feel disqualified, insignificant, nobody, but we all feel that. It's not unique. It's Moses at the burning bush is going, I can't go back. Why would I go back? I had to escape from my life 40 years ago, and they were, I'm a fugitive, and I'm settled, and I'm married, and got kids now. I'm in a whole new life, God. And God said, the reason you were born was for this. And he shakes himself up and finds that purpose in his life and goes back. And if he hadn't gone back, it wouldn't be MGM movies about him. I'm just telling you. There's something great that's locked in you that we're going to unlock this morning. Turn with me to, um, to Matthew chapter 26. We start talking about this morning at first service just about no limits. And God's the God of no limits. No limits. Turn to somebody and say, God has no limits. Because he has no limits, and watch this now, and you get on purpose with God, you become, watch, listen, limitless. Limitless within the sphere and scope in which God has ordained you to be. That God has no limits. There's, no, there's, there's, there's nothing ever to God that is just too hard for him to do. And Jesus had the full measure of God manifest, manifesting that in the earth. So he always did incredible stuff, no matter what. Didn't make him any difference. He didn't, he didn't high five. It wasn't amazing to him. It wasn't like, well, it's a miracle. Yes. It wasn't Jesus. He comes to the water and he, and he's a, 
There's no boat, so he just walks on the water. He wants to feed people. There's a few loaves and fish. He said, that's enough. That's not enough, Jesus. Yeah, it is. There's no way that's enough. It's enough. Trust me. Just break it up. Hand it out. I mean, it's just Jesus. And I'm telling you, that anointing that's in Jesus, watch this, is in you. It's in you. We are the body of Christ. And the spirit of God, it's in you. It's not a spirit that used to be. It is. God doesn't live in the, in, in the past, present, or future. He's all one. He's in all of them at the same time. He doesn't grow. He does not end time. He is time. He created time for the purpose of measuring us. So God's desire is to do great, crazy things through you. Unbelievable stuff. So in the first service, we talked about limited thinking that was found in King Joash. But we finished that service with conviction. Gideon was one who act, acted in conviction. He knew what he needed to do, and he did it. Now watch this. He had, you know, he's facing a great battle. The nation's in struggle. He only has 30,000-plus soldiers, and he's fighting 145,000, so he's outnumbered four to one. And God sees the numbering and says, I have a problem with it. And he gets him down to 300, so he's outnumbered 400 to 1. Sometimes you're walking with God, and it looks like it's going the wrong direction. Man, I'm, I'm worse off than I was before. I'm struggling more than I've ever been. Are you kidding me? God's just setting up to do something extraordinary through your life. He is majestic. He's powerful. I remember I was going through an issue, and I was really struggling with God, and I was mad about it. And I said, Lord, some of the things you said are dead to me. And he said to me, I raised the dead. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Let's talk about no limits. Rebellion against God's plan is an inhibitor. When God has a plan, he has a way, and he's setting that in motion in your life, and you rebel against it, it's an inhibitor. It will stop you from experiencing the great things God has for you. In Matthew 26, it talks about Judas Iscariot. Verse 14, he was one of the 12. He went to the chief priest and said, what are you willing to give me if I deliver him, being Jesus, to you? And they counted out him 30 pieces of silver. So from that time, he sought opportunity to betray him. God had started walking Jesus, and he's gathering disciples, and, and men and women start to believe him and, and see the incredible miracles he's doing. And then from this company of disciples, he chooses 12 to be apostles. He separates those, and he mentors those. And of the, of the 12, there's an inner circle, Peter, James, and John. And so when Jesus did significant things, he had around him Peter, James, and John, to raise Jairus' his daughter from the dead, Peter, James, and John. When he's in the Mount of Transfiguration there with him, there's Peter, James, and John. When he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray some things through, in difficult times, he takes Peter, James, and John. And I'm telling you, too, if you don't have some level of inner circle, it's going to be difficult for you to go to some high places to kick down some doors that have been established for a long period of time, and God has now weakened them and need you to, to kick them down without some inner circle around you of Peter, James, and John. Find some people that love God the way you love God and serve God the way you serve God and give the way you give and worship the way you worship and honor the way you honor and watch God establish great things around your life through your Peter, James, and John. So he marks these guys and Judas is one of them. Jesus has chosen Judas to be an apostle, but Judas chose to be a betrayer. And there's, there's some choices that you should never make. And if you made bad choices in your life, don't let them confine you. Confess them. Because God is faithful and just to forgive and to 
You know the second word? To cleanse. It's in 1 John. He forgives and cleanses. He doesn't forgive you and then there's a stain on your record forever. Any more than putting a red a stain on a shirt. You say, ah, that shirt's ruined. Wash it. Ah, that shirt is ruined. Wash it. It's ruined. It's wash it. Wash it. Wash it, dude. That's why you have a dishwasher. Wash it. Put some soap and some water in there and wash it. A miracle's gonna happen. The stain will come out. And the shirt will be like it was before. And then do something special and iron it. You'll find that thing will be like brand new. God wants to do that for you emotionally. He wants to store some relationships for you. He wants to handle some issues at your job and at your house and with your kids and with your siblings if you'll let him. He is the God of no limits. He can do anything at any time. He will forgive you and he'll cleanse you so it's no longer on your record. So what the enemy comes to bring as an accusation against you by talking you into doing something stupid that you didn't want to do yourself. And then he condemns you with guilt and shame for doing what he talked you into doing. You don't need to hide it. You need to confess it. And let God wash it and get you back on a course to being incredible. He is the great God. Judas never, never did it. He betrayed Jesus and went and hung himself. Instead of rebellion, let's submit to God's way. Jesus is the way, let's submit to his way. Let's submit to the way that God has and the plans and, and programs for our life. I love this behavior of David in 1 Samuel 24. David is not the king, and sometimes you can identify with David as, as the champion of Gal over Goliath and the king of Israel and the, and the great things that David has done. David had great, mighty men who were solid and did exploits in the earth. But what made them great was David, and what made David great was them. They, were, they had this symbolic and embryonic relationship with each other, and it was powerful and overwhelming. Listen, this is a great house that you're in. Covenant Church is a great house. It's a powerful house. And you ought, to, you ought to glean the things from this environment, not only the teaching, but just the atmosphere, so that you can, you can live your life and elevate some things in your own personal atmosphere. And if you will listen to a lie that said, you can't, you're nothing, you're nobody, it's just a lie. Just a lie. I don't have any resources. Yes, you do. You have the king. You have the resources of the king. You can call anything you need when you need to call it according to the purpose and plan God has for your life. Now, God is not going to allow you to call it to squander it on your own lust. That's not his way. When you get a passion and a purpose and a vision, God will do anything. And if he has given it to you, then it's established forever. And time becomes an ally. Watch David. David said to Saul, now David is in a cave and Saul is trying to kill him. And Saul slips into the cave in the dark and he doesn't know David and his men or in the back of the cave. And Saul comes in to relieve himself. And his guys say, this is it. Kill Saul. The guy's been trying to kill you, hunt you down. Kill him. God has delivered him in your hands. Kill him. Let us kill him. He says, no. David slides over and cuts the, a part of his garment off. Just a corner. And when he does it, it's, it, it's, it smokes his heart. It strikes him. And David realizes that's out of order. I can't do that. Saul leaves and David comes out of the cave and begins this dialogue with Saul. And he says, why do you listen to the words of men who say, indeed, David seeks your harm. Look, this day your eyes have seen that the Lord delivered you today into my hand in the cave. And someone urged me to kill you, but my eye spared you. And I said, I will not stretch out my hand against my Lord, for he is also the Lord's anointed. And after whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog? 
a flea. Therefore, let the Lord be judge and judge between you and me and see and plead my case and deliver me out of your hand. Listen, when, when you submit your life to the plan of God, sometimes it's going to cost you, but it's worth it. Then God's favor builds up momentum. Saul never chased David again. There's some times that Saul had David, and God always delivered him. But for after that, Saul never chased David again. Here's what Saul said. Remember my descendants, would you please? Because I'm sure now that the Lord will establish you as king. And here's how I knew. Because no man has an enemy, and he lets him go free, unless it's God. So Saul understood that what God had said to David was established. And I'm just saying to you, there's promises that God has made, oaths that he's made. Live a life that's holy and acceptable to him. You don't have to push your own way. You ought to, you ought to serve and honor and bless as many as you can bless. I'm number two. I'm number two. Go to the Cowboys game and say, I'm number two. You don't hear that. You hear, I'm number one. Because everybody wants to be one. What about two? What about just being a servant? What about just honoring those around you? How about just blessing your wife or your husband or your children or your neighbors? How about the guy that just hates your guts and talks trash about you at the job? And you bless him and honor him and do great things for him and keep doing some stuff that's, and they're like, why are you doing this? You're burning them up. You'll burn up all their resistance. You'll burn up all their, their contention against you. Why? Because you look like Jesus. You talk like Jesus. You act like Jesus. And Jesus is the way. He could do anything at any time for anybody. I'm just saying. You, we can stay in hate. Or we can go to love. Love never fails. You are qualified to lead. And you should lead. Either lead or stop complaining. I don't understand why. Stop posting that and lead. God made you to lead. You might be at that bush like Moses. Ah, it's too late. I can't go back. Yeah, you can. And you will. Father, in the name of Jesus, make us leaders. Empower us to lead in ways we have never led before. When David humbled himself, it was established that he was the king. Let me give you a third inhibitor. It's a love for money. Man, 1 Timothy 6.10, For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed the, from the faith, in their greediness, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You, you can't love money. Man, lo love, is, love for money is just futile for a believer. The world loves money, and they're, they're driven by money. But it's just, it's, it, it goes, and it comes, and it's just, once you leave, it's done with. You, you don't have any access to it. Don't, don't love money. It's just a waste. Use it, but don't love it. Remember the... The story Jesus talk, told about the rich young ruler, and he, and he, and he meets the guy along the way, and, and he says, what shall I do to be saved? And he walks him through the commands, and he says, I've done all those. And he says, well, only one thing you lack. The scripture says Jesus looked at him and loved him. Jesus saw a, a sincerity in his heart that was true, and he says, only one thing you lack. I wonder if Yeshua shows up to your house today and says, I want to bless you and make things great. There's only one thing I, you lack, and I want you to do this. And, you, and he says to this young man, go sell everything you have. Get rid of all this, this encumbrances and come and be part of us. And I'll make your name great. And he couldn't do it because he was attached to the stuff. It's a love for money. I mean, it's subtle too. I remember we were doing a campaign at the church and, and uh, I was asking families to give like uh, 300 towards this campaign and we, we were doing this deal and and so um, 
I decided instead of giving 300, I was going to give 3,000. I was going to put a zero. I was going to give 3,000. Just start as a sign, as a momentum. And the Lord said as I was driving in, I need, I need somebody to do something extravagant, Gordon. I need somebody to do something extravagant, which is cold, for I need you to do something. <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't even talk to you. I'm driving. <laughs> and he said, somebody needs to put a zero behind what they wanted to give. And, and I had gone through a whole process. I had saved $30,300. I'd saved 30000 And he said, I don't need somebody to put a zero. Give me, give me that 30000 And I was like, what? Are you kidding me? Then you know you start saying crazy stuff. I don't even like these people. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so I said to Derzette, uh, I said, Derzette, the Lord's asking us to do something extravagant. And she says to me, do whatever he tells you to do. I love Derzette. She's all in all the time. So I, I got to the church and I made the declaration to the church so I'd get accountable. No, let the enemy talk me out of it. When I knew it was God. I'm just saying, start living a life habit where you start sacrificing some things and give some things up and push some things forward to, so for the kingdom of God. And you'll find out that God will do what only he can do. He's the extraordinary God. So we're going to close this segment by asking you to do this. Just ask for wisdom. Proverbs 3.13. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand, health and healing. And in her left hand... Riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her. Don't reach for money, reach for wisdom. Father, give me your wisdom. You know what made Joseph unstoppable? He was sold into slavery and entered Egypt at the lowest possible place. Is he had wisdom from God and favor. And with wisdom and favor, you become unstoppable. No limits. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you break every limit, every scheme, every trick, every lie bit of manipulation and deception that the enemy's brought against our life, we ask that you break it. We need freedom and deliverance in our house, in our homes, in our marriages, with our children, in our bodies, in our finances, in everything. For you have a way and we're choosing to walk your way. If you haven't given your life to Jesus, if you haven't said yes to him and then lived a life that corresponded to the commitment that you made, then you need to do that again. You need to do that right now. You need to say, Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as Lord and Savior, as Master and King. Write, write my name in your book of life, Jesus. If you're praying that prayer, I'm going to just stand with you and, and ask God to start flipping some things in your household that are chaotic and bring order and structure. If you, have never, if you haven't given your life or you're coming back to the things of God and you pray, pray that prayer with me, just lift up your right hand and say, listen, I'm ready to get right with God. Thank you, sir, for that hand. Just lift your hand and say, hey, thank you, thank you, thank you for those hands. God bless you. God wants to do things for you that he just won't do for everybody else. God bless you for that hand. God bless you in the back, the red. God bless you for that hand. God bless your families for that hand. Thank you, Jesus. Extraordinary things, extraordinary God. Extraordinary things from the extraordinary God. There's no limits to him. And if you'll... If you'll stand, you raise your hand, you stand right now, God's gonna, as you stand to your feet, God's gonna break limits off you. God's gonna break limits. Come on, 
If you raise your hand, I want you to stand right now. God's going to break limits. Any, any limits that you have, God's going to break limits for you. God's going to break limits. God's going to break limits. God's going to break limits. Man, there's structures that, that are being demolished right now off your legacy because of the hand of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Just come, remain standing just for a second because you're not going to be standing by yourself long. Some of us who are born again and filled with the Spirit, but our minds, man, there's some things we're just kind of caught in. And we're in a struggle. Maybe that struggle is physical for you. Maybe it's emotional. Maybe it's financial. I don't know what it is, but you know. But you know that Jesus is the way. It's not a slogan. It's his way. He is the truth. He's a verifiable reality. And he is a, he is a life. He's not just natural life, he's also eternal life. It will live forever. There's some things in your life that need to be flipped today. Maybe it's a son or a daughter. Maybe it's your health. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's just, just the stuff. It's just so much you can't even put one thing. It's just everything. But I know God is able. I want you to stand. If you're ready to flip some stuff in your life. Let's flip them. Let's flip them. Come on, let's turn some things around. Here's, here's what the devil's telling you. That's not going to change. Yeah, he's a liar. It is changed. The moment you step, it's changed. If you're watching me online, the moment you make the declaration, it's changed. Wisdom gives us long life and length of days. You're not going to die early. You're going to finish your course. Things change. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the anointing that is in your word. The, the rhema the living word, so we know it transforms everything. And so we stand in agreement now as sons and daughters in your presence, knowing that you'll work this for good. I want you to take whatever it is that you're standing for, and I want you to look at that and say, in the name of Jesus, I, I speak to this situation, and you flip it. If it's poverty, say, I speak to poverty, and release blessing and resource into my house. If your son or daughter is not saved, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that this, this my son, and call their name, would give their life to Jesus Christ this year. Let them be born again. If your marriage is in ruin, say, Father, rekindle our love and intimacy for each other in the name of Jesus. Whatever the desire is, speak that now. Father, I ask that you hear every word and let the words that we speak be your word and that you grant our petitions according to your own desire. For we are one with you, and you are one with us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Grant every petition the young and the old, the rich, the poor, the male, the female, doesn't matter, it's grant every petition. Some of you are standing for households, households. So I'm hearing households. God's gonna change your household. Your household is kind of chaotic or out there and a little wild. God's gonna flip your household. It's not, it's not hard for him. Some of you are in poverty, God's gonna flip your household financially. He's gonna give you some stupid money, stupid. It's crazy, unbelievable. Become a big giver. Become a big giver. Watch what God does. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we break confusion in the name of Jesus. Let that spirit of confusion be flipped and broken now. And wisdom and insight in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you and strengthen you and make your name great. And may you recognize who you are in the kingdom and walk in the anointing of Yeshua. In Jesus' name, somebody said amen.